the light in the front. Oh, it's blinking. I, well, I'm, it's blinking, so I'm assuming it's meaningful. I've, I've been indoctrinated in technology enough to know if a light blinks. Must be interesting. <laughs> that might be why it's blinking. I'm not touching either. I'm just. Well, it's on the trunk. Maybe you can just touch the laptop. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to abide by the spirit of the note, the, not the letter yeah. of the note, They're and not touch that. a damn thing. That's certainly safe. Well, I think that's Copeat. So that might. I don't know why that would be right. But yeah, that's I mean, not a me problem. We might not live stream. Hopefully, we're still recording. Yeah. Hello? Can oh, I've seen them on there. Hey! Yes. Oh, it's green now, so. Yep, and it's 11.30. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm notorious for not following directions, so. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for being here. Um, we are going to talk about the Fediverse. Um, I actually picked the most wrong title for this talk on purpose um, to kind of drive home a point I will discuss about three quarters of the way through this talk. As a disclaimer, I am not representative of the Fediverse. I am not associated with the Fediverse. This has come of a, from a journey a more than seven months, but seven months in earnest, of irritation and self-discovery um, in thought about what um, social networking is. So, yes, um, I'm not the expert. There will be people who know a lot more details about the services I will discuss. Um, I'm only discussing the ones that I have physically sat down, installed, and tinkered with. Um, so that's why there is a very small number. Um, I also focused on interop um, because federation is the key part of this. So to get started, I would like us to start with a little thought experiment. Um, so I'm assuming many of you have gotten out of school and were looking for a domicile. Um, let's pretend that you are any career except for construction or something related to building a domicile. So they're very expensive. You could purchase one. Um, you're not sure how you can maintain it, you, but they're available. So you find out that there are these free apartments. So you're like, wow, I'm going to try that. And you move in, and it's very nice. I mean, it's new wallpaper, lots of really modern decorations. Um, and it's pre-furnished, so that's cool. Um, you get in, and of course, the landlord, um, he, has a, he has a master key. And, you know, it, it's, it's a landlord. He's OK. I mean, he's going to have to come and go. Not a problem. So let's follow this a little further. Um, you also know that their employees have the master key too. Um, but yeah, that's because they have to fix things when they're broken. Their maintenance, that's okay. And it's a little odd that sometimes the, the landlord brings his friends through to look at your stuff and kind of poke around your apartment to see like how it all looks. And it's odd, but you think it's okay because they, they come back and tell you how you can redecorate nicer or new things you could put up on the wall. So 
you let it slide. Then things get a little strange, though, because sometimes the employees lose the master key. And people come in, and they, like, piss on your carpet and take some of your stuff and move it around, and that, that's really annoying. And, but the landlord and his employees come and clean it up and change the keys. Um, but at this point, you're like, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, maybe I need to find a new apartment. At that moment, you realize that the landlord actually owns all of your furniture. And while you can take some things with you, they get to keep all the bits and bobs that hold them together. So now let's think about that. And are you OK with that? <clears throat> So, let's start with the cloud. There is no cloud. It is someone else's computer. And there are consequences to it being someone else's computer. You are renting their thing to do something. It's a, good ins it's a transfer of services, which is valid. That's OK. But, there are some consequences. The powers that be um, have kind of mutated things. In, in the beginning, social networking was people being sociable, like a news group or IRC. Then we went to message boards. But then, you know, these services had to make money. And there were also, like, media platforms. And they thought, well, let's mix these two together. So now, you have advertising and some guy yelling obscenities off his rooftop as peers. They're different. One is about corporate messaging, PR, and public image. The other one is about you being a stupid human and doing stupid things. Now, this is further consolidated because these services are very difficult to provide in bulk. So they've consolidated around a small number of content providers. Now, these content providers are the conduit for the media that goes in and the voices that come back out. They can create filter bubbles. They can create the world you live in. That's a little problem. There's also the matter of security. Who watches the watchmen? There are developers who just read your data. I think Snapchat was in the news lately that those messages that disappear after a while, that their developers are sitting passing those videos around the company, that's not OK. That, that is clearly a violation of what we assumed their fiduciary responsibility was. But we sign the signs, we, we sign their terms in, in agreement, so, you know, it was our fault anyway. So, oh, well, Alexa training. Who heard the one about um, them feeding red edit posts in to train um, the Alexa bots? And it was like sending out messages to people like to kill their foster parents and stuff. Um, <laughs> When they're experimenting with the system that we are using to rely on our communication and media, not cool. Um, there's also um, questionable security practices. Um, the fact that we're finding out a lot of these services have been using unhashed passwords. Who in here has ever maintained a multi-user Unix system? Who in here uses ETC pass, password. Necessarily. Yeah, but what's in the in that G code there? Oh, wait, it's in the shadow file, which is hashed to heck. Why did these developers not just put that in their code? Well, you know, no one no one's watching. There's no third-party audits. No one's coming in and saying, well, your database, this code is vulnerable to SQL injection. No one audits that. No one looks at that code. We, we assume their competency is following CVEs and securing systems. And to varying degrees, they're successful. 
as far as we know. And I think the most disturbing of it is we are a product. They make a lot of money off of our data. They are renting our pictures to us. So our personal stories, ideas, memories are being rented to us as a service. And for compensation, they get to mine that data, they get to sell that to third parties, and again, those third parties may or may not have good security hygiene and may put clear text passwords that were not hashed in the first place on an AWS bucket without a password attached to that either, where people find these things. Um, so, in the end, the goal of the service is to create more data for them to sell. So, some of you might ask, who cares about my pictures and messages anyway? It's not like I'm a political dissident or trying to overthrow the government. Well, I got news for you, honey. It's not Big Brother. <laughs> he does not care about you. You know who cares about you? Marketing. They want you to buy their stuff. And the best way for them to sell you their stuff is to know exactly what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and what you're interested in. Also, did you know, according to a study done by um, CareerBuilder last year, 70% of companies that are hiring use social media to research candidates. So things, imagine if a prospective employer came into your living room and overheard a conversation between you and your cousins that they may or may not know the context and use that as a reference, character reference to hire you. Are you okay with that conversation being recorded? Worse, 43% reported that they use social media to monitor current employees. So you are being watched at all times, well, not all the time, just random snapshots that come up in Google, which is even worse. There's also, now that we've willingly given up this data that we are renting from another company, the Fourth Amendment protections get very funny. Um, you know, there are questionable um, morality laws that are enforced at varying degrees depending on your gender, color, or orientation um, that can be used for seizing your data as a pretext. And there's also a slippery slope for more. As we become more, as companies observe us become more comfortable with our data being used as they see fit, more companies will do it, such as Ancestry.com, which routinely sells DNA information to anybody who purchases it. Even law enforcement doesn't need a warrant nowadays. They can just purchase it. So as this goes, it, where is this going to end? And as a slippery slope, you never notice it until you're flying down the hill. So, what is the alternative? I believe it is the Fediverse. This is a horrible name. Um, but hey, that's what happens when you have engineers do marketing. Basically, the goal is you are the absolute authority on you. Ideally, you know yourself and what you like, what you dislike, what you're offended by, what you're passionate about better than someone else. If you don't, there are a couple doctors in my area I can recommend, they're very good. Um, <clears throat> and you can get up and move at any time. If I'm on one Mastodon instance and I've decided that the community there is not one I wish to associate with, I could move to another di uh, instance, and y since they're using these activity pub, o o data, um, open protocols, it's a lot easier. You can take your furniture with you, so you have more freedom. But there's also, there's open standards for choice. 
why did we get into open source in the beginning? Because we wanted to do it our way. We wanted to have control and a choice. So we have things like ActivityPub, which basically allows you, it's SMTP with JSON, guys. Let's not kid ourselves. They fixed some parts that were questionable, but it's basically inbox and pop mail. So, but was pretty effective for 40 years. So we're using that. Webfinger, um, yeah, that was another oldie but a goodie. They just use an HTTP endpoint that you can query and get data from. OpenID. This one is very interesting because it's the idea that there is a trusted source that me as a third party trusts, they trust you, so I can say, all right, he thinks he knows who you are, so I'll accept that you say who you are. Um, that is very nice in federated services because as the federation grows trust between the nodes, you have a better um, reliability of identity. And then last, there's WebAuth, and which is relatively new. Um, one of the interesting parts of it is the FIDO2 standard, uh, which allows for um, basically replacing your password with a really interesting hash that is tied to biometric, um, USB token, things that you're not having to ch um, remember a password that you have to have a certain complexity and change every so often. There are some consequences to that, but we'll get to that next. So, there are some out there today that do this. Um, the most popular one by far is Mastodon. Um, they have a main instance, which helped a lot of their popular popularity, but you can also set up your own instance, and even if the main instance decides to block your instance, that all that does is keeps it users from discovering you. Users on that system can still um, subscribe and message back and forth or not because you have control to knock that user out if you don't want to talk to them. Again, you censor what you deem fit. I, don't tell, I have full rights to tell me what I do and do not want to listen to. I have absolutely no right to tell you what you can and cannot listen to. And that is a main tenet of many of these federated services is that if you don't like the message of where you are or the group of where you are, you go somewhere else without losing the community you may, aspects you may want to keep. Um, <clears throat> Mastodon does have, um, these nodes are people running servers. Um, 2,000 nodes is pretty good for reliability, um, the, and it keeps the network decentralized so there's no single choke point. There's also, one, um, this number is lower than what they advertise on their site because this is, um, they have a, tr a Fediverse um, tracking site, and there were, in the last six months, 1.4 million active users. So that's more important to me because they seem to all um, get a spike in new accounts whenever there's a data breach. Um, so this is like kind of the baseline of where the community is going, and they've been grow uh, Mastodon has actually been growing pretty steadily. Um, it's a little cumbersome to install, but if you've ever had to deal with like Nextcloud or, or um, Xbox Media Center, it's not that hard. Um, most of the time, it's limitations of a hosting provider. There's also Hubzilla. Um, Hubzilla is cool. It's, it's a very mature one. They were one of the um, early federations. They had a Zot protocol, and you could, was it Zoot or something, other people? Um, again, never let open the developers do marketing. Um, but they actually have basically gone, and they, they support almost every um, federated communication po um, protocol out there. So you can talk to anybody. Um, I like a lot of their approaches to how you federate and control access. Um, like I said, it's a little more complicated um, of the ones than Mastodon. Um, one thing that they have 
that is very interesting to me is they have an applications platform. So you have the ability to grow um, if you wanted to monetize or do a game or something based off of their API, they actually have something that you can work with. Dysphora, we talked about a little. Um, they are probably one of the oldest ones. Um, they, are, they had their own protocol for Federation. They're working on integrating ActivityPub. Um, they may have already, um, but I couldn't... Um, I didn't look into it much when I did the install. Um, unfortunately, these guys have gotten a very bad rap because, because of when they started doing um, non, like, social networking outside of the mainstream, a, a lot of extremist and hate groups tended to pop up on there, and it's not fair to really the open source people who were really the first ones to bat, so it got a real bad rap, but it's still very good. Um, it's very mature, well-maintained, and they have a concept of pods, and it's a little weird to get into it because their idea is your pod is your community, and you kind of self-select the people you want to be around. Um, and you can move around within the system, but again, that's what made it easier for what society considers questionable elements to do questionable things. One, well, I'll get to that later about some of the problems we have here. Um, Friendica, uh, it, it's an older one, um, not as popular. It really came on the scene as like a drop-in Facebook replacement. They've got a lot of bells and whistles. I really, I got to that one near the end so I didn't have a chance to really push it. Um, it's kind of a gentle introduction, though, because it does a lot of the services that your Twitter, that your Facebook, that your, um, that some of the uh, uh, Instagram, some of the things that they allow you to do. Um, one of the coolest things is the way it is written, um, it's kind of the same philosophy as Nextcloud, is you can get a very low-end web hosting company that, like, if they support PHP and have a MySQL account, like DreamHost or something like that, you can literally run an instance for a reasonably sized club off of a $10 a month like web service. Um, or you can go totally crazy. Um, so it is, it's a very um, low budget entry if you need to start, if you want to start private groups or clubs or things like that. Now this one is interesting. It, I didn't have six months of data, so this is really um, very recent. These guys are going in a direction that I personal, personally feel is better. It's, it's, it's brand new, I don't know where it's gonna go, but their idea is that they have a back end and they, they wanna promote that everybody has their own back end. Um, so, you federate within that to further eliminate the ability of having a central choke point of censorship. Um, they have a very nice, pretty looking UI. Um, I, I think it's cool, I'm gonna keep my eye on it. Um, I like the direction they're going. So I, I personally would like to go more to self-sovereignty, but we'll get to that later. So, then, there are, oh, I think there were like 20 services on there. Um, like some included chat and some that did file sharing. Um, go to the federation.info. Um, they allow you to select by like um, language, by protocol supported, by number of users, and they have graphs of like metrics on how active they are. Um, I would focus on things that are pushing um, interop with ActivityPub. Um, if they have Dyspora, that's a pretty popular one that they use, but I think as we move forward, more parties are going to be um, going to ActivityPub, and I think um, industry things like um, Twitter probably more than a Facebook will start supporting that sort of activity. Um, it is an open standard. It is um, reasonably easy to implement, so I think it's going to gain a lot of traction. And, and really, find what works for you. 
So what's stopping everybody from doing this? Because this sounds great. Well, <laughs> as an engineer, we stand there and like, well, it's simple. All you have to do is just. Every time I hear that, like as I, I, I do a lot of sales now in technical sales, and every time I hear one of my peers say, all you got to do is just. Just stop them there because it's going to wear good. Um, because there, there is some complication to this. There's, there is a lot of vendor lock-in. It's a lot of effort to try to get as much data out of your, current situ of your current provider and muck around with things. So it's easier just to, it's not bad enough. They'll just live with it for now. Um, there's also a lot of messaging that you hear around privacy. People will say things like, well, if you don't have anything to hide, you have nothing to be afraid of. And to those people I reply, you're right, that, that's a very good point. So I need you to do me something. I need you to go downstairs, get your mortgage. I want like the last year's bank statements and your social security card. Lay them out on the sidewalk here and we'll just leave them overnight because you don't have anything to hide. Well, I don't know who's going to look at them and, and, and take stuff from me. Ding! Again, it's not Big Brother that you have to worry about. I mean, you do, but whatever. I trust the government marginally more than I trust industry. So, <laughs> there are. Um, when you have a central choke point, you have a Big Brother everywhere. Yes. So... Um, I think the messaging has been very um, detrimental to the cause. They associate um, self-sovereignty with being in, um, an undesirable element of the community, um, when in fact you are actually trying to form community instead of living within the confines of what they tell you to be a community. Uh, they also don't fully understand the scope of what's going on. It's very easy to visualize when you see your bank statements on the sidewalk, but they don't understand that little poll that they see of, what Harry Potter character are you? I'm a Hufflepuff. Okay, they now have got a demographic information about you that they can file in and say, all right, you're gonna be more susceptible to this form of messaging. So you are helping them optimize to sell you things. That you know, do you really need? How many people buy toilet paper off of Facebook? Show of hands. Nobody? Who buys the latest whatever gadget that's in the sidebar? Come on, admit it. I know you do. They're trying to sell you stuff you probably don't need anyway. Um, there's also, <laughs> there's, um, there's also that, that consumerism. There's also, like I talked before, background checks. You have people doing a Google search on a name and getting random Facebook pages. How many Rob Smiths are there in the world? How many are in your, gra in your graduating class? So now you have people who don't know better trying to do a little sleuthing and find a questionable post done by a teenager five years ago who is now being disqualified for a job because it won't look good for our company image. That's again the social media aspect bleeding in. There's also the problem of managing hosted services. As much as people complain why Microsoft forces Windows 10 updates, it is because of the amount of unpatched XP machines that have fed bot armies for the last 15 years. People don't want to patch and maintain and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they want to like go and sail a boat. They want to work on their bathroom in the weekend. They, they don't want to upgrade their router firmware. Most people, like, you're lucky Verizon now just puts in a random hash of, pa of letters and tapes it on the box because you let them pick the password? <laughs> That's how you get another bot army DOSing things because they infiltrate these. So there, there's a real problem there in them maintaining these services. And then also, there's cost. You don't see 
the cost of your data being spent. So, you know, Facebook is free. We have been indoctrinated from day zero that if it's on the internet, it's free. As in beer. That's not what he meant in the beginning. He said free as in speech. We've had this discussion as Linux people. Um, there's also the biggest problem, monetization. Unfortunately, um, we live in a, a free, um, free market society, which I happen to appreciate when it is a truly free market. And nobody can really make money on people keeping things to themselves. So there really hasn't been anybody to find an uh, exploitable market um, to actually invest in this area. <clears throat> so what can we do to help? Well, you know, I, I talked in the beginning that, that thought experiment about being a carpenter. I have a room full of carpenters. Um, <laughs> society is geometric. You get one person who impacts two other people into their social network, who impacts other people. We have, a more, we have been indoctrinated by Facebook um, that you meet people by a query search. Imagine you standing at the mouth of the Hudson Tunnel, staring into New York and yelling, who likes teddy bears? And everybody in Manhattan who likes a teddy bear says, me, and you all hang out together. Okay, <laughs> that's creepy. But that's what we do when we go on to these social networks and we're like, hey, let's talk about this. Meet space is actually a pretty cool place to meet and interact with people. I get to know you before I kind of sign on to that social contract with you. You could be a person I have coffee with, next, sit next to him, and we go our separate ways, or you could be a lifelong friendship. Let's establish that in a, in a personal setting. It also helps solidify things like identity, trust, um, who's brought into a social group, etc. So I would encourage like these PGP signing parties where, oh, you have to identify yourself? Yes, we do that every day. You see the same person getting coffee at the coffee shop and, oh, I recognize you and you talk to them. So let's, let's focus on forming relationships like humans do, not like some programmer thinks is easy to implement in his graph database. Actually, I've audited two anthropology courses on Paleolithic to Neolithic trans, um, um, the, the change in culture. So I am pretty sure I have scientifically established how you can make a friend. <laughs> if that doesn't sound creepy enough. <laughs> so let's pretend that federation is just not good enough because, hey, there's some guy managing a server who you may not agree with at some point. You could fall out with them. People's friends change. Um, you are the best judge of what comes in and out of you. You say something stupid, you're allowed to. You may have consequences, but no one has the right to tell you what you should and shouldn't say. You could suffer consequences socially or legally from what you do or say, but you have that right. Likewise, you have the right to tell somebody, I don't want to talk to you, and I want to talk to you. We've been talking about consent um, lately um, when it talks to when we deal with um, romantic relationships, but that percolates down to every level of society. If I don't want to talk to you, that's my choice. But if I do want to talk to you, we have to make that choice together. And the only way you can do that is if you're free to do that and you don't have somebody imposing those rules on you of who you should meet, who you shouldn't meet, and what, et cetera. So we are gonna talk about peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, again, another technology that got a horrible rap, BitTorrent. Um, BitTorrent, again, it's that idea that when you're in charge of yourself, 
there is no central choke point. You can do more things as an organic group. So these guys, Scuttlebutt, um, they are basically, in, at the end of the day, they're a peer-to-peer -peer log store. Uh, this has some interesting consequences. Um, it's a gossip-based protocol, so um, it's actually closer to maybe um, early Usenet, where you had your servers synchronizing every once in a while. So it's, it's more like a peer-to-peer, -peer well, maybe Fidonet when you're in BBS days. But anyway, what is old is new again. So um, it has end-to-end -end encryption. Um, all the records are encrypted because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's a data store. You have to have encryption at every level. Access control is not delegated by some admin or programmer who may or may not have implemented ACLs correctly. It's done through encryption keys that it's pretty easy to say, you can see this, you cannot. It's easy to implement. Um, they also have a very nice API to build applications off. They have a couple proof of concepts, um, including um, a GitHub that is totally peer-to-peer -peer decentralized, um, kind of how it was originally intended, but um, it runs within their network. They have chat, they have um, some Twitter stuff. They have a very strong um, identity system because of the way that they have end-to-end -end encryption. Um, you can't have encryption without trust, so they also have discoverability, um, which in a peer-to-peer -peer, um, scenario is very, very important. Uh, one of the things, oh, I didn't put this up here, um, one of the problems is with Scuttlebutt is it is its own protocol, so it's not HTTPS, you can't go through it through a normal web browser, you have to write or you have to use a special application um, that may or may not be a barrier um, to some people. Um, I, there's a lot of value into not having to ha install yet another thing on your computer that could be infiltrated, spyware, whatever. Um, MIT license, so you have room to grow. If you need to take the tinfoil hat and pull it a little tighter, there is zero net. Uh, these guys I have not dug into, but they have some really cool stuff um, where they're using BitTorrent for the communications protocol for um, basically record publishing and data publishing. Um, kind of a, 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 they're not really large file like, like movies, they're more like pictures and tweets, stuff, short and, uh, blog entries. Um, they have a very cool API, they don't have a lot, um, Scuttlebutt has actually a lot of really cool proof of concept apps, um, and some that are actually beyond proof of concept. Um, ZeroNet doesn't have a lot of them, but they have a very well documented and pretty flexible API. Um, and it's an open source license. And of course, there are some programmers in here and we'll create our own social network with blackjack and hookers and... <laughs> so, at this point, I will take some questions and try to answer them with varying degrees of competency and we can go from there. Yes, sir. Yes. No one in either of those two groups are going to be able to uh, achieve uh, all of the things. So I will call the answer to each question. So my question is, who's trying to get rights to the uh, podcast? We sort of, I, urban end people know, but the podcasters are like, I feel like it's like, what, what, what is the person who's like, I can't really afford to have this person on my quasi- Well, it, actually, it is very. Actually, it's a very good point, um, and I think that it it gives me a chance to make sure I'm delineating very, very firmly between social networking, 
which is you and me talking, and social media, which is us following a group. Media is about broadcast, where networking is about our interaction together. By separating those two, we can have a better um, qualification of roles. If you're by nature following a public broadcast, you know, there, there are some societal norms and laws you have to follow, and you're doing it in the open, so there's no private, I mean, privacy is, you're, you're saying it out on the street. Um, but when you start melding um, an individual voice into a, a media platform, you now have companies that get very spooked by their public image when they have individual people um, in the same context as their PR image. We actually, when you get to see the archives, I, I don't see the gentleman here, they had a talk over in the Linode room earlier in, in the weekend here where he was talking specifically on that, de, um, decentralized media. Um, Go back in the program, I think it is actually called Decentralized Media, and he went over how to set up your own um, decentralized podcasts, videocasts, stuff like that. Yes, sir. But the cool thing is, you are a carpenter. Help build their house. I don't, I don't, like, that's Well, and that's valid. That, that is valid. And, and, but, but the other example is, um, a couple weeks ago, my son and I um, were at a park, and some teenagers had been there the night before and were entertaining themselves, so there was a lot of litter on the ground, and um, there was another disgusted parent there, and I told my son, well, let's go pick it up, and the other parent was like, why? why? I mean, we're just going somewhere else, and I said, well, if we don't do it, who will? Check on the distri distributed media. It's, it's mostly podcast and YouTube-like, um, but they have a way for discoverability, following, monetization um, that is not... Yes. Okay, and I'm sorry, you keep raising your hand. Yes, sir. Um, there, there are lots of interesting, all this technical stuff is interesting. The real problem to be solved. I'm pretty sure the main problems are on the social side. Yes. Because as far as I can tell, there's no incentive for Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram and, and various other competitors. No, there's not. In fact, Mark Zuckerberg overrode he, he had the ability to overro override and veto his shareholders in, the last, um, in one of the last meetings where he basically said, no, I'm not going to change our data collection practices. They have... There is absolutely none. In fact, there is more money to be made by not federating. So they cannot be depended on to fix this. No, I know, but I, that's, who will? If, if there's not, like you said, the problem is monetization. It's monetization, monetization. So it is, but... People running it in their own houses, it's going to work for on a small scale, but it's not going to save us. Just like that college kid who started hacking on this like operating system kernel a couple years ago and... 
it kind of. I don't know yet, but if you try to help, you might figure it out. If enough of us are doing this as people who can maintain a server space safely or write this software, um, we've proven with desktop environments, operating systems, web servers, entire languages, that we can change fundamentally how industry operates. So why can't we actually do something other than making electric scooters and try to make society a little bit better. Well, I'm just thinking from a user's perspective. Like you said, users are, are used to, are, are not going to want to pay a subscription for a virtual mm -hmm. network service. Can, do you think it's possible to change ordinary users' minds about that? Maybe, but I think there's, you, you, I think there's other ways to monetize. We just, we can figure it out. But there's value there. No, no, no. You have to forget the idea of money. Because it is not for people to make money. Well, it's not for us. It's not for us. It's for you. And this would be the last point. This would be an opportunity to think about this from a practical standpoint. And you said that I think this is really important from the point of the practical standpoint. You were going into things that make you and make you see that the problem is there. That there's so many other people doing this and it's wrong. And that's where Federation is helping. I mean, once you got BitTorrent trackers, it was a lot nicer. So, yes, sir. I would bring up, it's not really social, social networking, but NextCloud is an awesome alternative to Dropbox, and it's a great platform. But, um, I use it extensively. But yes, uh, Guy in the end, and then you. Yes. I, I'm conflicted. I, I, number one, I want, I want to take the moral high road of you can censor yourself. It's but the slippery slope comes in, and you know, I, the fact that we mix social media and social networking, I think, has gone a long way into making this a real quagmire, and we need to facilitate systems where they can have decentralized media. And we might, have cro we might have interaction and bridges, but I, I'm not sure I would want to have like um, Johnson & Johnson or General Mills having their own Mastodon server.
See, and I, I think there's some validity in there because you are controlling the installation of and access to that instance. So I, I think there's a way out, and I just, I guess at the end of the day, my message is to you hackers, developers, sysadmins who have competency in here is, you know, jump in. Maybe we'll figure this out together, just like we figured out a desktop environment, a web server, languages, Python. I mean, we've done things that the industry struggles to do on our own just for the fun of it. So let me give this a crack. So I think we're out of time, but I want to give this gentleman second in a chance. It's still a little janky, but yes, and actually there's a lot of development going into integrating that. Um, Nextcloud's federation is more B2B oriented, but that's not a bad thing. Um, it's, pardon? Business to business. Like company A wants to share a file securely with company B. Um, it just so happens that it's um, palatable enough that you can run two or three users on it just fine. Um, it's um, actually, there's some interesting stories about that it can get in otherwise, but yes, Nextcloud is really pushing these protocols too, which is awesome. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And I don't see anybody fell asleep or left. Thanks.